All right, and welcome back guys and girls to a Dead by Daylight Killer Guide. It's been a while since I've done one of these. This time we're gonna look at the Nemesis, the Resident Evil Killer for Dead by Daylight. I've been hunting for stats and information because I believe it's always good to get an understanding of how a killer works. So stay tuned guys. Alright, so the Nemesis, he is the newest addition to the Dead by Daylight killer roster, he came out in the PTB just last night. Due to this being the PTB information, might change, but you might be wondering how long his range is, how much does his slowdown decrease, things like that, and I always think it's important to know the numbers to help you become a better killer. So let's start by looking at his basic stats. The Nemesis is an extremely tall killer with 115% movement speed. He has a 32 meter terror radius. His difficulty rating is intermediate, so let's take a look at his perks first of all. The Nemesis is going to come with three teachable perks, and these are called Lethal Pursuer, Hysteria, and Eruption. Lethal Pursuer will allow you at the start of the trial to see the auras of all survivors for seven seconds. This will then deactivate after that, but it's a good perk to get you into chases quickly. Hysteria is his next perk and this activates when you put a healthy survivor into the injured state with a basic attack. So not the tentacles guys, all other survivors if you do that will suffer from the oblivious status for up to 30 seconds. If you are wondering what the oblivious status is, it is basic survivors being oblivious to the killer's whereabouts. So survivors won't hear the heartbeat and any perks that rely on terror radius will not trigger. His final perk is called Eruption. Eruption will activate after you kick a generator. The generator's aura will turn yellow. When you put a survivor in the dying state, again with a basic attack, every generator affected explodes and regresses its progress by 6%. If any survivors are working on that gen when it explodes, they're gonna scream, they're gonna alert you to the location, as well as suffer from the incapacitated status effect for up to 14 seconds. You might be wondering what the incapacitated status effect means. Basically, if any survivors are incapacitated, it means they cannot interact with certain things on the map. This includes repairing gents, sabotaging hooks, using their items, healing other survivors, so basically interacting with other survivors, or cleansing a totem. So that's his three teachable perks. So what about his powers? The Nemesis powers is called the T-Virus, and this has a number of different actions split into different sub-powers, let's say. The main one is his tentacle strike. Hitting a survivor with a tentacle strike will make them contaminated and increase your mutation rate. If a survivor is already contaminated, they will take a damage state. Be aware that if a survivor is already injured but aren't infected and if you do a tentacle strike, they're not going to go into dying state, guys. Instead, they are going to become infected. If a survivor is contaminated, then they suffer briefly, and I mean very briefly, from the hindered status effect. This means they are temporarily impaired in their movement speed, which is reduced by 20%. Survivors can vaccinate themselves and there will be supply cases on the map, but this is limited to four cases only. If a survivor uses a vaccine, the killer instinct will activate and alert you as the killer to their location. Now, if you look at the bottom left, you're gonna see your, your mutation rate. These go up every time you use a technical attack on a survivor or destroy one of your zombies. Mutation rate level one has no special benefit. And I will go over the numbers soon, guys. So hang fire and you'll see what that all means. If you go into mutation rate 2, your tentacle strikes can break breakable walls and pallets. At level 3, you will have a slight increase to the tentacle range. Now, with the Nemesis power, you also have a special enemy and this is the zombies. You will have two zombies on the map and they will casually roam around. If a zombie attacks a survivor, then they will inflict them first of all with the contamination. If the survivor is already contaminated, then they will receive damage. Like I mentioned earlier, killing these zombies will increase your mutation rate, but only if you do so with a tentacle attack and not a basic attack. So if you want to punch them, punch them for fun, not to increase your power. Zombies can also be destroyed by survivors, only if they use a pallet to do so. A zombie is going to take 12 seconds to respawn if they are killed by yourself. 
if they are killed by a survivor they'll take 30 seconds so let's have a look at some of the numbers behind the powers which i'm sure will help you understand and play better with this killer to charge your tentacle strike it will take 0.35 seconds and whilst you are charging your speed is going to drop to 3.8 meters per second which is 96 percent movement speed Cancelling a tentacle strike will take 1.5 seconds and the cooldown movement speed is going to be 4.2 meters per second when you are performing a tentacle attack the range is 5 meters if you are in mutation rate 1 and 2 if you are in mutation rate 3 that is going to increase to 6 meters the time to attack is 0.25 seconds and attack hit time is 0.33 seconds. All cooldowns from any attack is 2.5 seconds. Like I mentioned earlier, to increase your mutation rate, you need to hit survivors or your zombies with your tentacle attack. Each time you do this, you receive contamination points. Now, if you want to reach mutation rate 2, you need to get 6 contamination points. To reach level 3, you need to have 15 contamination points. This is all without add-ons, guys. So this is just a standard. You can get add-ons that will decrease the amount of contamination points you need. So how do you get these contamination points? Okay, if you hit a survivor with your tentacles, you will gain 3 contamination points. If you strike one of your zombies, you will get 1 contamination point. So the contamination timings are as follows. If you hit a survivor, I mentioned earlier, they will suffer from the hindered status effect. That is a 20% speed reduction, but this is only for 0.25 seconds. If the survivor vaccinates and the killer instinct is gonna alert you for three seconds, it takes a survivor three seconds to vaccinate. If the survivor's opening the supply crate, it takes four seconds. If you don't collect the vaccination, then that chest will close after 15 seconds. Now, let's talk about zombies. These spawn up from the ground randomly at a hook location and after 12 seconds. I mentioned this earlier, and if you destroy it as a killer, then it will take 12 seconds to respawn. And if a survivor kills one, that will take 30 seconds. The zombies will walk at 1 metre per second, so they are very slow and has an attack hit time of 1.3 seconds and a cooldown of 0.5 seconds. Now, the important thing is their sight radius. As standard, their sight radius is 40 metres, so you can use this to your advantage when you see their auras attacking or going towards a survivor, then you know that a survivor is within 40 metres of that location. If the survivor goes outside of 20 meters, then that zombie will go about their business as usual. Normally in my guides, guys, I discuss best ways to play the killer, hints and tips, but it's just too soon. But drop a like on this video and I will make sure I follow up with a full guide after the release. What do you think of the new killer, guys and girls? I, for one, am having plenty of fun and kills with this killer. Hopefully this guide explains the numbers behind the killer, and if you are on the PTB, then this information should help, and hopefully not too many changes happen when he gets his full release. Check out my channel, guys, for more Nemesis gameplays, as well as other tutorials and guides, and I will see you on the next video. Alright, thanks, guys.